Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Flex and Glow. Today we're tackling a super important question in the fitness world. Is there an ultimate way to use progressive overload to max out your muscle gains? Stick with me here because we're about to dive into some cool insights. Now many of you might think progressive overload is just about going harder than you did in your last workout. But hold up, there's a bit more to it and I promise to break that down in just a bit. For starters, let's talk about the basics. Progressive overload can generally be approached in two ways. Either you up the weight you're lifting, or you increase the number of reps you're cranking out each session. But here's where it gets juicy. We've got fresh research that puts these methods head to head, and we're going to slice and dice this study to see how it stacks up against the broader scientific consensus. And because we never stop at just the basics here, uh, we'll also explore other savvy training tactics that could seriously level up your training game. Uh, ever pondered whether adding more sets or boosting your training frequency could count as progressive overload? Well, today's your lucky day because we're covering that too. In this new study, 39 folks who hadn't trained before were recruited. Now, before you jump to any conclusions about them being newbies, hang tight because there's more to this story. These participants trained their legs using a leg extension machine, four sets at a time, two to three times a week for 10 weeks. For one leg, they increased the weight over time, sticking to the 9 to 12 rep range until failure. On the other leg, they kept the weight constant but increased the number of reps they could do until failure, from about 9 reps to 15 reps by the end of the study. What's super cool here is that each participant trained each leg differently. This setup minimizes the impact of differences in genetics, nutrition, or lifestyle since the same subjects were tested under both conditions. When it came to strength gains and muscle growth, measured by the thickness of the vastus lateralis, that's part of your thigh, both methods showed similar results. This suggests that whether you increase the load or the reps, you can effectively boost muscle growth. But wait, there's more? We also have data from a 2022 study involving trained individuals which supports this finding. Whether you're adding weight or reps, both strategies seem to work well for building muscle. Not just in beginners, but also in those who are already fit. Now let's talk about why this matters. In essence, progressive overload is about maximizing muscle fiber recruitment and tension, which are crucial for stimulating muscle hypertrophy. That's the fancy term for muscle growth. Whether you increase the weight or the number of reps, you're achieving a similar effect. You're maintaining high muscle fiber recruitment by training close to or at failure. Think of progressive overload as a cycle. A challenging workout sparks adaptations in your body. These adaptations then allow you to either lift heavier weights or perform more reps. And by keeping your workouts challenging, you continue to stimulate growth. It's also important to understand that progressive overload isn't about pushing yourself to the extreme every single time. It's about consistent measured increases in difficulty. This could mean adding a little more weight or just one more rep depending on what you can manage and how your body responds. And remember, while you can increase reps, there's a practical limit typically around 35 reps if you're training close to failure, beyond which you might just be adding fatigue without effectively increasing muscle tension. So whether you're a beginner or more advanced, combining both strategies, increasing both load and reps over time, tends to be the most practical approach, especially for exercises involving smaller muscle groups where adding a tiny bit more weight might be challenging, bumping up your reps gradually can be a great way to keep progressing. All right, let's jump right into some cool findings about different training strategies that you can use within a single workout session. This isn't about progressive overload over multiple sessions. It's about how you can mix things up during your workout to keep those gains coming. So we know that you can see similar muscle growth within a six to 35 rep range, as long as you're pushing close to failure. This opens a ton of doors for how you can structure your sets. The usual approach is to keep the same weight throughout your sets and just hit that near failure mark in your desired rep range. But let's spice things up a bit and talk about another method explored in recent research. Imagine you're doing curls. According to this study, you start your first set with a weight you can max out at about 10 reps. One group sticks with this weight for all their sets. Another group drops the weight by 5% for the last two sets, and a third group reduces it by 10% for those final sets. Even though everyone is training to failure, those who lighten their loads are actually able to throw in more reps as they go. But here's the interesting thing, every two weeks, they retest their 10 rep max to adjust the weights accordingly. 
What's fascinating here is that all groups saw similar growth in their biceps. However, the group dropping their weight by 10% found their sessions a bit easier to handle, which is great for maintaining long-term motivation and reducing overall strain. There's also a flip side to consider. You could increase the load across your sets, which would naturally decrease the number of reps you can perform. Comparing this approach to the more typical constant load method, the results in muscle growth were still pretty much the same. What does this all mean for you? Well, it shows that there are multiple pathways to achieving those muscle gains. Whether you decide to push with the same weight, decrease your load to pump out more reps, or even increase your weight and do fewer reps, you can still achieve great results. It's all about what feels best for you and how you prefer to challenge yourself in the gym. Remember, variety not only keeps things interesting but can also be a strategic part of your muscle building journey. So, let's break down the concept of progressive overload a bit further. As you know, progressive overload is all about keeping your training challenging to continuously stimulate muscle adaptations. Now, some might think that just adding more sets or increasing your training frequency can achieve this, but it's not quite that straightforward. Imagine you're doing a workout where you've already pushed your limits. Next time around, if you simply tack on an extra set without changing anything else, here's the issue. The original sets might start feeling easier because you've already adapted to that level of effort. Essentially, that extra set just adds more volume. It doesn't necessarily make the whole workout more challenging. The same logic applies when you think about adding another day of training in your week. If you're just repeating what you've already adapted to, you're not necessarily pushing harder in those sessions, you're just doing more of the same. While this means more overall work, it doesn't guarantee that you're upping the intensity or the challenge where it counts. However, this isn't to say that increasing sets or sessions is a bad idea. In fact, a study we looked at last October showed that adding sets over several weeks can lead to more muscle growth compared to keeping the set count constant. Every group in that study was also increasing the load in their workouts, so they were still keeping things challenging. But this brings up a crucial point. There's a limit to how much you can increase your workout volume before you run into recovery issues. It's not just about how much you can handle, but also about how much you can recover from to actually benefit from your workouts. Ultimately, while it's totally fine and more common to stick to the same number of sets and the same training frequency, tweaking your approach every few months or even years can keep things fresh and effective. Remember, it's all about finding what works best for you and adjusting as you grow stronger and more experienced. So if experimenting with adding sets or sessions appeals to you, give it a shot and see how your body responds. The recent study highlighted that strength gains were similar whether participants increased the load or the number of repetitions. However, another 2022 study on trained individuals suggested similar findings for squat strength gains between these two methods. Despite these results, there are technical considerations that might make these findings a bit misleading. My current analysis leans towards the idea that increasing the load is more effective for strength gains because strength is fundamentally about lifting the maximum weight possible. Moreover, training with heavy loads and fewer reps under six is particularly beneficial for building strength. This point is supported by research where trained individuals performed exercises like bench press and squats in very low rep ranges, two to four reps, which showed favorable strength gains. Thus, for those focusing on increasing strength, particularly in lower rep ranges, progressively increasing the load is essential. All right, so in the long run, mixing up both methods by increasing load and reps might be your best bet for continuous improvement. While adding more sets or training days ups your total workload, which has its benefits, it doesn't quite match the pure strength gains you get from upping your weights. So if you're looking to maximize those strength gains, focusing on increasing your load is likely your go-to strategy. Thanks for tuning in and keep pushing those limits.